Good morning. The words to the prelude are actually in the pews on the song card. That's what number three, it's number three on the card. I will rise. To those of you who are here in church and to those of you watching online, good morning. Jesus loves us all, and if we keep his commandments, 
we will remain in his love. Let us follow Jesus and improve our lives by avoiding sin and becoming his disciples. There will be a special collection today for the McIntyre Fund of the Archdiocese. Please place your donations in the donation envelope in the pews, pockets, and place your donation in the regular collection. And please remember to silence your cell phones so that we can worship God without distraction. Thank you. Our celebrant for this Mass is Father Isaiah Mary, and our preacher is Father Peter. Let us begin our Mass singing 422. All are welcome. 422. Numbers are in the front as usual. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. On this Paschal Sunday, dear friends, let us quiet our hearts and minds and thank God for all the gifts he has given us in Christ. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us a life everlasting. Amen.
Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance we may always hold in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him and, falling at his feet, paid him homage. Peter, however, raised him up, saying, Get up, I myself am also a human being. Then Peter proceeded to speak and said, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. While Peter was still speaking these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the word. The circumcised believers who had accompanied Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit should have been poured out on the Gentiles also, for they could hear them speaking in tongues and glorifying God. Then Peter responded, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit even as we have? He ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Rejoice and be glad. This 
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent His only Son into the world so that we might have life through Him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as expiation for our sins. The Word of the Lord. According to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain. So whatever you ask the father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. In our readings today on this sixth Sunday of Easter, we are hearing much about the Lord's commandment to love. And this might sound a bit strange to us being commanded to love because we might think of love as coming from outside to us. It might come from encountering someone and maybe we start loving a person from that encounter, but it's coming outward from that person to us. And so how can we be commanded to love? We might have someone come up to us and we don't love that person. And yet Jesus is commanding us to love. But 
we have to look at the kind of love that Jesus is commanding us to give. Now, there's one kind of love. To one, love one another might be to love our, uh, a favorite sport we have and maybe even a favorite sports team, such as the University of Utah football team, the Utes. And I use that purposely because I don't want to say USC or UCLA, because half of you are UCLA, some are UCLA. I'm not going to go there. So, yeah, I graduated from, I have a degree from the University of Utah, and I love that team. So, yeah. But is that kind of love Jesus wants us to have? Or maybe is it the same kind of love that I know that I have for chocolate, anything chocolate? Is that the kind of love? Now, these things give pleasure to us. Watching the University of Utah play and become the Pac-12 champions, that brings pleasure to me. Eating chocolate brings, brings a lot of pleasure to me. But that's just coming from outward in. Jesus gives us a clue about the kind of love he wants us to give to others. In the middle of the gospel passage we just heard when he says, love one another as I love you. This is the love we need to have for one another, the same love that Jesus has for us. And that love is unselfish. It looks outward to the other, not from outward in, but from in looking outward. And it is a love that understands that the person in front of us is made in the image of God, the likeness of God, and a child of God. And that shows us that we need to love one another as Jesus loves us. Now, sometimes we might look at someone and we might have a lustful thought. Well, when we do that, we are objectifying that person. But if we can kind of catch ourselves and say, no, this person is a child of God, created in his image and likeness. And I need to have the love of Jesus for this person. Then we can move away from that temptation of lust. We need to get into the practice and habit of loving everyone as being in the image of God. So a love like the love that Jesus has for us asks not what pleasures someone can give to us, but what good can my love do for the other? What can my love do as good for the other person? This is how love is totally unselfish. It is a giving from ourselves to the other. And Jesus says that loving so much that we are able to lay down our lives for the others, the kind of love that he wants us to have for each other. That's the love that he has for us. He laid down his life for us. He hung on the cross, suffered the excruciating passion and death on the cross. And that didn't do him any good. It was for our good. His love was so great that that love brought us the good of salvation. We have seen that we are to love one another with the love of Jesus. But we still have that question from the very beginning. How can we be commanded to love? Well, we can be commanded to love because Jesus has loved us first. 
even before we existed. He has loved us first, and he has put that love in us. We abide in that love. And that is why Jesus, knowing that his love is in us, he can command that we use his love within us for the good of the other, to love one another with that love he has already first given us. Now, in the past couple of weeks, in the gospel passages, We have heard examples of how much Jesus loves us. It keeps getting reinforced in this Gospel of John. Two weeks ago, we heard Jesus give the image of being the good shepherd. And it's because a shepherd loves his flock. He loves each and every one of his sheep. And that love is so great and deep And talking about that love, Father Isaiah mentioned in his homily that if anyone were to tell us that Jesus does not love us, he does not love you, then we know that is a lie because Jesus does love us. That is the truth. He loves us. And we hear these examples throughout Scripture reminding us that Always. And even last week, last week, Jesus told us he is the vine and we are the branches. And when you think of a grapevine, Jesus being the vine, he brings nutrients to the branch. And so the branch will grow and bear good fruit, good grapes. And Jesus gives us nutrients. As a branch is connected to the vine, we are connected to Jesus. And he brings us nutrients of grace, of blessing, of compassion, of mercy, of forgiveness, and love. And then he tops it all off with the greatest gift of all, his body. His body that we receive in Holy Communion at every Mass that strengthens us to be able to go out and live better lives and follow him more closely and to avoid some of the areas of sin that we have committed. In our faith in Jesus and our love for Jesus, we have the love of God poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So we are now able, by grace, to love as Jesus loves and to fulfill that commandment, to love one another. And by doing that, we will follow Jesus And we will keep his word, which means we will obey his commandments, obey what he teaches us to do. And by doing that, we will remain in his love and become his disciples. Expressing the great love that, that we have for the Father and the Father has for us, we renew once again our baptismal promises as we answer these questions. My dear friends, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary? suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. It's the faith of our church, and we are proud to profess it through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord Jesus said, whatever you ask the Father in my name will be granted. Therefore, we are bold enough to place our needs and our desires before the throne of God. That those searching for faith in a chaotic world encounter Christ in every member of the church, we pray to the Lord. That nations cooperate to develop compassionate immigration policies, we pray to the Lord. For all of our children in the St. Dominic Children's Faith Formation, who received First Holy Communion yesterday, we pray to the Lord. Lord. That all who gather here see the face of Jesus in one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord For the repose of the souls of Andrew and Innocentia Silbor, whom we remember in a special way at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord for the intentions written in our book of prayer and for all the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord. On this month of our, of our Lady, we seek her intercession always as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord.
pray, my friends, that this your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offering, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, the law you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as they acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and blemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant for peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, Albert, his assistant, and all those who, holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servant. all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying the homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glories of our Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bethlehem, Matthew, Simon, and Jude. Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and each other, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hand, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You have set us free. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as much you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father, in faith, and the offering for high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In, pray, in humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on the high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, to those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor rejoice forever and ever. command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive We pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God. Jesus 
Jesus Christ is that your apostles. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. On you stay, quit all is Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Body of Christ. 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 Lord Jesus bless the catch off the day to your life. Body. Body.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, to restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. Three of our brothers, Dominican brothers, are preparing for their ordination, which will be on Saturday, May 25th, at St. Dominic's Church in San Francisco. And in the bulletin, you'll see a picture of one of them, Brother Andrew Thomas Kang. Why? Because he's coming here. He's coming here to join us. I'm not leaving, Father Isaiah's not leaving, Father Francis isn't leaving. We're getting a new additional Dominican to be with us on our staff. And we're very excited to have him. He'll be uh, joining us on July 1st. July 1st is the traditional day that all of us uh, go to our ministry sites whenever we're making a change. And so uh, that will be the day that he begins with us. So in the next weeks, I'll put some additional information, a little bit about him, so you get to know him a little bit week by week as we prepare to welcome him. Mother's Day spiritual bouquet cards are still available in the office after Mass and throughout this week. And then Mother's Day, next Sunday, the cards will, names will be on the altar. So this is the last week to be able to get your spiritual bouquet cards. Check the bulletin also for information on the school's alumni reunion on June 8th and on the dinner gala in November. And we have rented out the upper parking lot up here tomorrow, Monday the 6th. So that will not be available all day tomorrow for parking. Thank you. It's worth noting that, uh, as Father Peter said, that uh, with uh, the oncoming of Brother Andrew Thomas, what's beautiful is that one of the blessings of it is actually that the three of us aren't leaving. We're actually adding a fourth. So how many parishes in the Southland has three and a half priests on staff, right? So it's a blessing from God and from the order to give us this wonderful gift of this rookie priest. Please stand now for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, hallelujah.